So let's get our ingredients together so we can get making on this tea rub. First thing you're gonna wanna take, you're gonna need a third cup of maple sugar. Now, you can also use, if you don't have maple sugar, you can also interchange it or use coconut sugar works great or just plain granulated sugar. Uh, maple sugar is, you can make maple sugar. Some places it's a little bit more rough or tougher to find. But in this recipe, it's good because you can definitely interchange it. And uh, the glycemic index of maple sugar is much lower than, say, your regular granulated sugar. But coconut sugar works just as well, and its glycemic index is super low as well. So today, we're going to be using coconut sugar. So you need one-third cup of coconut sugar. You're going to need one-fourth cup of just plain salt. <laughs> You're also going to need a fourth cup of black pepper, and then you're going to get into some of your spices. So then you're going to need three tablespoons of paprika, one and a half teaspoons of garlic powder, three fourth teaspoons of chili powder. Now, ancho chili powder would probably work really good. It's going to give it that extra kick, but if you don't have that, Use what you have in your home, and if you, all you have is just chili powder, let's use chili powder. We want you to use what's in your house. Um, we believe in being sustainable as much as possible. Using what you have to create, you know, your dishes, dishes when I say food dishes, uh, different kind of uses for tea, we want you to use what's in your house. So, after the chili powder, you also want a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. And the final and the most important ingredient we're going to be using today is tea. Now, let me show you the tea that we're going to be using, okay? This one is called a Lapsang Souchong, okay? And it looks like this, if you can see it. Uh, it doesn't really look, have a specific look, but the aroma and the smell from it is very, very smoky. And so it's going to impart an extra smokiness to your meat, which is going to make that flavor come alive. So you really want to choose a tea that's going to enhance the smokiness of your meat. So you don't want anything that's going to be too sweet, uh, too uh, light in flavor, if you will. So a Lapsang Shushong is going to be very, very good for this. So if you don't know anything about a Lapsang Shushong, it is a black tea, and it is actually... Uh, dried over like a pine wood uh, fire pit, if you will. So it's, it imparts those extra smokiness. It, you can imagine it, you know, if you're in a pine forest or anything along, along those lines. It's kind of woodsy in nature as well. Some people would, I think, equate it in their minds, maybe like a tobacco-ish. So it's going to be very, very good for a meat rub for pork, or beef. The one thing you want to do with your tea, and I've already done it here, is you're going to use about three to four teaspoons of loose leaf tea. We're going to just use this, again, Lapsang Shushan. You're going to grind it so it's in a fine powder. So I'll show you what that looks like. And it's just a fine powder, okay? Uh, you can use, if you have a mortar and pestle, that works great. If you don't, what I simply did was I placed the tea in a Ziploc bag and used a wooden rolling pin and it and ground it till it was in a fine powder because you don't want to be, want to be crunching <laughs> on a full leaf tea when you're eating your meat. So you want all your ingredients to incorporate. All right, let's mix everything together and go through the ingredients and you can definitely see how it looks because it is aesthetically pleasing as well. And then we'll seal it up. So first, again... We want to take that maple sugar, well, in this case, coconut sugar. Let's pour that in our bowl here. You want to do your pepper. Mix those, get those all in there to good. So we're going to mix them up really, really nice. You've got your salt. So this is going to be a good hearty meat rub, okay? Paprika, we're going to get a little bit of spiciness in there too, okay? With your paprika and your chili powder. Go ahead and mix your garlic powder in there. Garlic is always nice to add uh, to your spices. It's one of the spices you definitely want to keep on hand. Let's get our chili powder added in there. Cayenne pepper. 
this one didn't want, there it goes. Get that cayenne pepper in there. And then last but not least, our main ingredient, which is the tea. Okay. I like to take a whisk to kind of whisk it all, to aerate everything, to get all of those spices good and combined. So let's get our whisk in there and just whisk it up. So there's no wet ingredients in there, in here, which makes this really nice. Because if it was wet, it would be definitely be sticky, and we don't want that. If you see any lumps in your spice, your tea rub, go ahead and get those lumps broken up as much as you can. Like I said, I like to use a whisk to do this, but you could definitely just use a wooden spoon. I would suggest wooden perhaps instead of metal or steel spoon. But I think a whisk definitely works best. You can always whisk it a little bit. And you can see those spices have really, really incorporated. See that? And it looks really good. Again, the smell is amazing. Because we've imparted not only those really good dry spices, but we've added the tea, which is providing a smokiness already. Let's take a whiff. Oh, gosh. It really smells good. Um, this is going to be delicious on your meats, everyone. Let's finally get that mixed in there. This is a super easy recipe, and it doesn't take a lot. And you've got all these ingredients on hand. Uh, they're, you know, typically things we keep in our pantry. If you don't have the tea, um, a lapsang shushong, you could definitely use like a simple assam would probably work. It's not gonna impart as much smokiness or that smokiness, but you can use an assam if you have it. Uh, a pu'er, if you definitely have a pu'er, now that's gonna be a lot different because it has that earthy underground taste similar to mushrooms perhaps. So you kind of wanna be careful with that, but it could definitely work. I would not suggest um, anything sweet and oolong is a very nice tea but I don't think it would work really well for this it's definitely not going to give you a strong flavor and you're not going to get that smoky intense uh, scent or taste that you want when using a rub if by chance you have one of our blends called southern hospitality you could definitely use that. It does contain Lapsang Shushong, so it would work. It also has a little bit of sweetness to it from the mango flavor. So that would impart an unusual uh, interest to your meat rub. I think it would be really, really good. Something to definitely try. So if you have that one on hand, I would recommend using it. It is still very smoky. So you get a lot of that smoky, intense flavor. But like I said, it does have a little bit of sweetness from some of the mango. So you're going to get uh, the added extra fruit kind of sweetness that a lot of times goes really well with meat. So I would be, be sure to try that if you have it at home. I would use that prior to any of the other ones unless you have a basic lapsing shushong. Now, if by chance you are interested in just having and you want to uh, purchase Lapsang Shushong, let me know. We will definitely make that available for you, those who are watching. If you have that question and you want to be able to purchase that, we could do it. Uh, typically, you're not going to need, like I said, we're only using three tablespoons or teaspoons for this recipe. You could double it, uh, but you're going to get enough of let's say even if it's just one ounce that's going to be plenty and you're going to have extra you're definitely going to have extra for this so one ounce of tea is going to be plenty to use and if you really like the tea i suggest making a cup and having a sip because tea is great for enjoying okay now let's get i think everything is incorporated it looks really good we've got the lumps out and we're gonna set that whisk aside. Now, you wanna store this in an airtight container. So we don't want it to be something where air is gonna get to it. We don't want uh, something with holes in it. So I recommend you could definitely use a 
a canning jar that has a seal on it. You don't have to can it, but just make sure it has a seal because those are airtight. You could definitely use a jar with a screw on lid that remains airtight. What I'm simply going to use today is a plastic Rubbermaid container with a good airtight lid. This is going to work fine. We don't have to worry about sunlight. Uh, I know it has tea in it, and that's one of the things tea is it doesn't perform its best, but because we've mixed it with all these other herbs, it's not going to be a problem. Let's go ahead and pour that into our container. Get that in there. Set that to the side. Cover it up. Make sure you get the air out of it. So you're gonna store it in here in a cool, dry place. And you guys, that is it. You have made your first tea rub. Uh, like I said, feel free to use it on your meats. It is going to be delicious. I'd love to hear what you think. Send your thoughts, comment below. Let me know what it tastes like when you do use it. All right, guys, I'm signing off for the day. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon, and we'll see you next time on Cooking with Maribet or the day with Maribet. Goodbye.